or in a corporate uh, plan, in the corporate plan professional is very uh, experienced in investment banking. Uh, when we have business and large plans across the US, UK, Middle East and Indian markets. We began a career with, as an investment banker working for Merrill Lynch and then JP Morgan in New York and London. We later worked as an Islamic banker for five years with two of the largest Islamic investment groups in Kuwait during which we structured various Sharia compliance products, funds, investment structures and private business. Mr. Ahmed graduated from Bates College in USA and with a double major in economics and mathematics and has also studied at the London School of Economics uh, UK. Uh, he graduated from Venture Capital uh, Development Program at IAP Hyderabad. Uh, now I think I will uh, that I will leave the floor to you. Thank you. Yeah, don't even mind the Underpasses. I don't know if that was ever in the market, and this team is actually going to some. Under Mangalore, like Rashid, we all know Rashid. He's um, a good friend of mine, and he he gets full credit for all my stuff. And so Rashid, I want to be very, uh, you know, for some stuff in campuses, and uh, and you do something like that, and he says that he has out. I'm very happy to be here. So I want to keep this very short and sweet and uh, make this more of an interact, interactive session. Uh, and the whole topic, the whole idea of being here is to introduce you all, since I imagine most of you are finance, uh, you know, uh, you're all MBA obviously, but right? I guess most of you are doing finance as an elective work specialization. So uh, you're all looking to make a career in the world of finance. Uh, I think a very important area you could also consider is Islamic finance. And Islam, as you know, finance is now in, encapsulates everything, you know, the banking, insurance, you know, asset management, the whole, you know, the whole world. So Islamic finance is the world's largest alternative financial system today. And uh, I want to divide this presentation from the two parts, three parts actually. Uh, what Part would be, uh, you know, this is a multimedia presentation on what Islamic finance is. Uh, some of you already know something in depth. Uh, I still think this would be interesting, but the vast majority of you, are, I'm sure you'll get a lot about what really Islamic finance is by uh, going through this presentation. And then I'll step into uh, a discussion of opportunities available in Islamic finance, the role of Islamic finance, where they are available, what sort of opportunities are there, what are we talking about, which sectors are we talking about and what skills do you really need as Indian professionals to get those opportunities. Uh, and these are basically opportunities outside the country, uh, this is where you focus on the Middle East. Uh, and I'll, I'll come to that part. And finally you can have a short Q&A uh, session and you can always be in touch with me as we go along. So I want to start uh, and please feel free to uh, you know, ask any questions during this presentation and whenever you feel like. The presentation is going up, the rent will also go It's not always, it's not fixed, the five percent, just the simplicity to state the five percent, but you can revise that every year. This is good. Uh, is for the mm -hmm. That's what happened here. The Nick, the homeowner, if he defaulted, he couldn't afford to pay, then he lost his job. So still he was better off than the conventional uh, loan case because he could monetize the state. So supposing he owned 30% of the house and then he couldn't pay further, the house will be sold in the market for whatever value and 30% of that value will go to Nick. 70% will go to the bank. So the rent doesn't get increased. The rent is rent is a separate thing which is fixed in, uh, you know, every three months, every six months. It is real. based on the contract between Nick and the bank in the beginning. They continue continually be, you know, revising the rent based on market. We'll have some formula, some you know, there are various ways of doing it. So that we all agree with the beginning. Uh, so if the person defaults, the other asset falls down. Then is the bank using no so yeah, I mean that's what Islamic finance. You will see there's there's no risk, uh, there's no reward, there's no risk, there's no reward. That's the principle uh, of Islam. It's a very key principle in Islamic finance. So that's where conventional finance is different, where banks and finance finance. Uh, the concept of rent is to make it appear to be very similar to the concept of interest in tradition. So given that in Islamic finance there has to be some tax. 
these Islamic finance products can be done in India today if we have people who will think about them in terms of getting them implemented in the present uh, regulations of the country and you know, working through that process. The big issue we have here is very little human capital uh, who knows about some financial plan. So that's the challenge we have here. But, as, but as I'm confident that things will change soon. A lot of jobs are expected to be created or are being created in the Middle East, the Gulf countries. Uh, you know the Gulf, right? There are six countries, there are a lot of Indians work there. Uh, it's quite a lucrative area, tax free salaries, etc. And uh, the interesting thing is, uh, out of the six countries, one country didn't have. Islamic investment, one different from a more simple. There will be no difference. You know, you don't want to, you know, you just don't have to be different for the sake of being different. So they do everything the same way. You will do an IPO, you need to raise money, you will do a second job, you will do a private placement, you will do a all these things are possible. Yeah, you would you would look at sectors. You, you basically say, okay, we want uh, we want we want to advise a company that is an unethical sector. Okay, that's, that's the only thing you do. And of course, for an MA transaction, you won't use financial debt. You use all the Islamic finance mode to fund the company. Leasing is very simple, you can either do a lease to own or just an operating lease where I am the bank, I give you my car, I, buy, I own the car, I give you an operating lease, you use it for two years, you pay me a monthly rent and then you return the car to me and it you value or you pay a and then you become the owner of the end, lease to finance lease. Or a trading, as I told you, I buy the car, I sell it to you, you immediately become the owner but you have to pay me this uh, with the profit on the stock. But uh, in the case of the house loan, we are very actually appreciated. Yeah. In the case of the uh, car loan, we are appreciated. Yeah. So the, the, the bank here is basically, you know, the Islamic bank is transferring the ownership to the car loan. Okay, they take, uh, you can take a collateral. And the collateral can be an asset of the car itself. So in case the customer is not paying, something is just back to us. So is the profit rate that is the same for all customers or depends on the credit? Uh, so that is we to charge uh, the profit rate once, less than you have to charge, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a trader, I can charge whatever profit I want. So if you're saying that they charge different profit rates for different customers. Yeah, like depending on the credit. Different rating. We do vary the the profit rates based on the amount of uh, now financing you require. Okay, but uh, you can do, you don't have different profit rates for different types of customers based on their profile. Good question. Good question. Why did you ask all these questions? So that you you uh, analyze the presentation. That's very good. Thank you.